What's up YouTube, Shepard Drake here coming at you with an in-depth guide to King's Fall Orcs Encounter with Challenge and Tip for Master. First, let's take a look at the basics. We're going to break this encounter down into three different subjects. One being layout, two being mechanics, and three being strategy. To give you guys the best idea of how to complete this encounter, we're going to start off by looking at the layout. We begin with four plates. Left one and two, right one and two, and the twos being at the back of the encounter, <laughs> and the others... <laughs> And the other thing we need to be aware of is the knight and ogre spawn shown here. The layout is pretty basic and if you watch my daughter's guide, the mechanics is basic as well. All we are doing is building platforms between two plates to collect a piece of the brand claimer. Again after collecting all three brand claimer pieces, you can finally hold interact to acquire the brand claimer itself. Once acquired, you need to today, Junior! Once acquired, you need to steal the brand from the Hive Knight in the center of the encounter for immunity from the bombs. Now this brings up the difference between Daughters and Oryx. Which are the bombs? Remember the Ogres and Knights I talked about previously? Well, they're important. First let's talk about the Fuck. First let's talk about the Ogres. Oryx sends his best Ogres to kill you equipped with their own blighted bombs. Once killed, each Ogre drops a blighted bomb directly where they died. Or isn't happy with the fact that we have those at our disposal, so he sends resilient knights to recover them. It's even more important you kill the knights over the ogres, but consider both to be equivalent importance. Now you've got a blight on the ground, avoid channeling the blight, aka touching any part of it, until Oryx calls upon the darkness. He will call upon the darkness after a set time, or once the brand has been stolen off the knight in the middle. Now Oryx calls upon the darkness, he will wipe the encounter momentarily, unless you date... date? Unless you date his daughters? Now Oryx calls upon the darkness, he will wipe the encounter momentarily, unless you detonate a blighted bomb. To detonate a bomb, you need to channel it for 5 seconds. Remember, all you need to do is be within any part of the blight to channel it. Once your name reads that you've detonated the bomb, head straight to the bram holder in the middle to avoid the detonation of said bomb. If done correctly, all four bombs will be detonated simultaneously and the damage phase immediately begins, adding about 7 seconds of damage per each bomb detonated. Upon the conclusion of damage, one of two mechanics will take place, either the Gulag or Mortar mechanics. If you're lucky, you will get the Gulag, as this gives you the opportunity to kill some adds for ammo. The way to avoid wiping to this mechanic is killing the melee version of Oryx. However, if you get mortars, you need to clear out all four taken knights on plates to stop mortars or run around to avoid the mechanic until it concludes. After these are finished, you will be on to the next phase. Finally, let's talk about final stand. This is key to differentiate from the mechanics previously talked about. No longer do the bobs add time for each one detonated. Now their only purpose is to prevent a white mechanic. You will see ogres L2 and R2 spawn in and immediately be before Oryx positions himself for final stand. The bombs are now used to stagger Oryx instead of add time. So now it's suggested to stagger detonating the bombs for final stand as when Oryx calls upon the darkness, now the only way to prevent that from wiping you is to have the bomb detonate before he claps your cheeks. I mean his hands. If done correctly, you will have three separate sections to continue damage for final stand. Now let's talk about challenge for Oryx. Challenge, you need to make sure you do not kill the same knight or ogre at the same location. This is a lot easier than it sounds. Just have your four plate players rotate each phase and it should figure itself out. My suggestion is to have no one stand on the first plate until all ogres and knights have been murdered. This will prevent the plate people from being torn and the flexes to have to kill any ogres or knights avoiding any confusion. And that's it. And to finish off, let's talk about the difference for master. The knights that spawn on top of your plates are overloads and that's it. Hopefully these strategies and tips help your understanding and clears. This is my final King's Fall guide, but I'll still be making other videos, so check back soon. That's going to be it for now, and as the Sherpas say, a la vida.